Hey guys, Bob with here. We're back for more Bloodstained Curse of the Moon, and now we are on. It looks like a very decrepit old piece of crap ship. Great. And we're hopefully not going to get any leaks on this boat, right? We are going to have some enemies, though. This is where the game starts to up the difficulty of the stages somewhat considerably, and we get introduced to a new enemy here that just loves to bounce around and act like a nuisance. Thankfully, they're not that bad. But imagine they're coming in droves, and you can't really do much about them except beat their ass, or... Yeah, you just have to beat their ass, or get underneath them. That's one of two ways. Miram here is going to be your very helpful aid to getting across these pits and dealing with these enemies with their nice whip. And trust me, Miram... It's nice to have Miram, because she is definitely the go-to person in most situations, unfortunately for Zangetsu, because, I mean, she just has the long range, the high jump. Nice thing about Gebel here is that if you break these, you will always get a blue bottle, and trust me, I would rather get a blue bottle than to waste time with something else. Then we get to introduce to one of the most annoying enemies in this game, because you need Gebel for most of them, and it shoots a fireball out. These things should be very familiar to some people in the Castlevania series, of particular enemies that love to do the exact same thing. And then when you kill them, they break into a bunch of bottles. Hmm. I'm pretty sure people are very aware of what I'm talking about here. I believe they call those enemies the White Dragons, but... Whatever, they're dead. And if you're thinking this enemy is going to do the exact same thing as the last guys, no. These things shoot out poisonous blobs, and you do not want to be touching them, because not only are they a really big nuisance, but they're very, very persistent with those projectiles. If there's one thing that can be said about this game, is that projectiles are kind of like a... Uh, or luxury. If your character can produce projectiles, you're already on the right track. And if you can't, well, you're kind of in trouble. Especially with this guy. This guy requires you to get close. As you can see, his range is across the, the floor, almost. Fortunately, it doesn't take too many hits, especially if you have Gebel in the lead. Because Gebel's attack is a little bit higher than everybody else's, but you have to be in somebody's face to actually do that much damage. Think of it as a shotgun that shoots upward in an arc-like pattern. Now, if you played Rondo of Blood at all, this enemy should maybe give you some ideas and some horror stories to talk about. This enemy here is the painting, and it is a mini-boss. Mini-boss that sucks reason being is that it's really hard to hit it, and it has an instant death attack. That, for instance, you want to dodge that or actually be a brave lad. Zengetsu, so you, if you mind. Yeah, Zengetsu can actually do some damage to that thing, and it's nice to see that the pain is like, oh crap, not getting any of that. But as you can see, this thing is trouble. One interesting thing, though, is that Alfred, if you have Frost Caliber, can actually kill that thing in one hit. So, another reason to consider Alfred in the picture. And it's funny how I get this after the battle. Thanks, game. I'm, I'm glad that you're thinking so much of me right now. So, the nice thing about all your characters is that when you have everybody in tow, this game does not get really difficult. Like, it kind of it kind of shows you how useful each of the characters are in their own regards. In that, damn, it's kind of nice to have such a closely knit team that works together and has synergy. Unfortunately, uh, if you lose one of those party members, that's when his things start to get a little hairy, and I imagine that's going to be happening sooner or later, especially with the whole neglect of my health just a tad and once you do you start to realize that that once you lose somebody you're gonna possibly losing everybody it sucks but that's how the thing way things work in this game 
And honestly, I kind of like that because it makes you value your characters more. Oh, I really want that thing up there right now. Problem is, is I would not recommend you going for it straight ahead because you have this thing here causing trouble. And you get all this nice little weapon energy after killing it. Meaning you can refill up after getting that little extra heart extension. Here's the enemies I was talking about. The whole silver armored axe throwers. They take more damage now. So, and of course, we're in this situation where we're outside and I am getting dragged along. That is bad. So, I don't think I touched on that earlier when he did that. But yeah, this is where the levels get dangerous now. Because you're going to be doing some platforming with this wind. And while it's cool and all, I, I had some nice nightmare experiences in Glust, or Gusty Glade and a couple other games like, uh, you know, the Lost Worlds or Lost Levels Super Mario Brothers. Yeah, that was a nice introduction to the, the wind being a complete pain in the butt. So this is going to be no different. And now we're going to be upside. Okay, this is going to be fun. Please give me some anti-air. That works. Probably should have used the, uh, the Zengetsu for once. I mean, he's here. He's the one that brought everybody together. So we might as well make good use of his ability. So, yeah, this is where the level starts to get really difficult. And you want to be very careful with your jumps here. Especially going in the direction of the wind. Because, uh... That becomes a lot more of a shorter, tighter jump. Luckily, some spots will have you falling into the ledge below, but don't count on that for too long. As you can see, there's a lot of lanterns and not a lot of enemies. There are some, though, so be careful, especially if you're going for that particular lan lantern over there. I honestly don't think there's anything of use. And we also have this green lantern. You're probably wondering, what the hell does this do? Well, look at that ability. Have you ever seen this ability at all? That's a good damn question. I don't think we have shown off Voltic or Voltic Ray, I think is what this is called. But it is Alfred's best ability by far. By best ability, I mean best at killing bosses, not just in general. We're going to show that off right off the bat. Oh, hi. Hmm, this boss looks very, very interesting. This boss's name... Adria Lopasin. Yeah, I'm not going to pronounce his name correctly. But this boss is actually very tricky. That attack will hurt like hell because of... Well, Alfred, that was cool and all. We didn't even get to show off your damn ability. Yeah, that's what happens if you let that attack just drag you right off. And that's only if you stand up. Man. So, I guess we're gonna have to show off that ability another time. Thank you, game. But yeah. Adria Lafasathen. Let's just call it Adria. This enemy, this boss, is actually one of the more difficult bosses in this game because of how fast it's moving. It's in the air, so the only way that can really do anything there is freaking Gebel, and Gebel's not the best man for this job, but he's pretty much your go-to person at this point. Especially if you had Alfred kill himself just like mine did. Or you could use uh, Miram, or you could use Zenjetsu, but I picked up the wrong weapon for the for the man. So as you can see, this thing is fast and has a number of attacks that are very dangerous, like pretty much almost full screen attacks, which sucks. But once you figure out this boss, it becomes a little bit more manageable, but still difficult. Like you don't not want this boss to parade all around you and kick your ass and make you lose all your lives, because that could very well happen if you're not prepared. So as you can see, this boss goes in a very predictable pattern, takes about two or three swoops, and then releases these fetters that generate some electricity, and on the left side we'll use that storm attack, which is very nasty, because as you can see, it will drag you off the stage, considering your characters don't move very quickly. 
And if it goes from the right, it does Valhalla Kick. And that has pretty much the range of the entire ship that you... in front of it. So it will... that attack covers the whole left side, almost. So get over him to avoid that attack. There is no other way. The dangerous part about getting over him is that you could jump off the ledge because you have a lot more speed. But luckily, but once you kill this boss, this fight's not going to give you too much problem. What I suggest you do is to wait for it to jump in to the right, do that, and just sit right here. Because you're going to be seeing some crazy-ass lightning. Damn. Oh, wow, that, that castle got really fucking close. So, yeah, we're going to be heading there, guys. That's the point of destination right there. One nice thing about this next part coming up, though. Getting some Mega Man vibes here. Look at that. And that's not just a small map. That's a pretty complex looking map. Tragedy of Slaughter is the first of the castle stages. And they are difficult and long. So be prepared to uh, get challenged. And trust me, you will definitely be getting challenged. Luckily, it doesn't start right off the bat. One thing I've learned about these enemies here with their shields, they block your projectiles. Well, the ones that don't, like, obliterate them totally, aka freezes them. And that kind of sucks, but at the same time, it makes sense. I mean, they just aren't holding the shield just to look pretty. They're actually defending themselves with it. So you're thinking, oh man, that's cute. My, my sword just goes through that crap. What, why even bothering with it? <clears throat> Grabbing this, and as you can see, that the red stuff to the left obviously going to kill you. It looks like lava. I don't know where the waterfall started, but damn, it looks very, very scary. And if you're wondering what I picked up, we're going to call that the Power Glove. The Power Glove is basically going to uh, increase your attack power by one extra hit. So. Enemies that took five hits will now take four, and it's only your main weapon, I believe. Uh, your sub-weapon does not get the benefit, but honestly, having a more powerful main weapon is helpful. Because that guy's take only two, or takes only two hits with the uh, Zengetsu, and I believe it's the same for uh, Miram. Wow, damn, Miram, good coverage with that. So yeah, these guys are definitely just as bad as they were back in stage 4, but uh, if you were to miss that by killing off Miram in the first screen, or just not bothering with it, then yeah, this, this gets harder. And bosses definitely take extra damage too. I don't know how much that calculates, but uh, it's better to have it than to not have it. Enough said. Okay. I think we're going to be using Miram for this sec next part. And we're going to get introduced to these lovely saw blades that have been doing a wonderful job just causing misery. And we're going to show off Voltic. Wow, that didn't do anything for me. Yeah, Voltic Ray is a boss killer because of... Ah, shoot. The reason why Voltic Ray is best used for bosses is because once it goes off screen... When... It, it, it pretty much becomes worthless. Like, it will disappear and you will never see that ball of wonderful lightning potential. But when it's on a boss, it will pretty much seek the boss religiously. It will just kill the hell out of that thing. Thing is, is that uh, it lasts for like five to six hits, so you're not going to expect one is going to do the job. It's going to take at least multiple ones. So uh, just keep that in mind. So we're probably going to be losing it here shortly. As much as I would like to keep it. But uh, this next part is much easier with Alfred using the Ice Beam. And trust me, uh, this part is much better if you don't have to deal with lava. Because uh, it's nice to see a very dangerous Hadger just get neutralized with, an, with a man's rod hitting some frozen stuff. Great. Just absolutely great. However, I should understand that Alfred is not good for killing enemies, because the fact that this Alfred does less damage... Oh my god, you guys are ticking me off. Less damage than everybody else in the game. 
with a slower attack rate, yeah, you should not be using Alfred for anything other than uh, weapon usage. So we get the Iron Maiden room. As you can see, we have some people using them as uh, portable homes or having them fall directly on your head. Thankfully, they don't turn you into a shish kebab that way, so it's nice that that threat is not there looming over your head. However, it does hurt like hell, so you don't want to have something metallic fall on your head that probably weighs about 300 to 500 pounds. Yeah. And we get introduced to the fan service enemy of the game. These cute little bunny girls trying to crush you with their ass. <laughs> I'm not kidding. And apparently they create a heart, lovely heart shockwave from their posterior and just causing all sorts of problems because of, of the way that you have to dodge them. You have to literally jump at just as they land or you're going to get hit with the, the love tap that they're producing. It's very charming, but also very sinister. Just like these saw blades. I mean, the idea of what happens is that if you jump too high and hit that saw blade up there, well, you're taking some more unnecessary damage. Please tell me thank you. That's what I was wanting to see. I wanted to see some anti-air because we got bats, and we already know what the bats do. They can mess you the hell up real quick over death pits. Alright, let's see. Nice thing about Frost Caliber is that it also overrides projectiles, or just has such long range that projectiles won't matter, because the enemy won't see you except this big honking sword coming towards you. Nice feeling to have. This might be helpful. These enemies suck. Way to dodge them is to jump over them just as they pull their scissor or like pair of scissors over their head, and they're creepy ass enemies, man. And, but they nicely uh, give you plenty of time to retaliate if they miss. As you can see, it's like, oh man, what the? I thought I was gonna do a great service here. I'm gonna give this to Alfred. He needs that health. Besides, we're gonna get more health upstairs because we're near the end of this level. That's pretty damn smooth, man. The usual last time I went through this, I just totally died so many times. We get introduced to one of the most annoying enemies in the game. This guy right here. This guy shoots, has freaking boomerang mallets. And he takes a ton of hits. And there happens to be two of them here, so this, this can be very treacherous. And of course, you have these wonderful Medusa-like enemies just causing more misery. Ah, man. That sucks. Grabbing this with you, because we need you in the top of your game. I highly wished I got... Ugh, damn it. I really wished I'd gotten some anti-air, but having Skypes isn't going to be too bad for this boss. And this boss is something else. This is Bloodless, and if you can imagine why she's called that, it's not because that her dress is literally made of blood. Uh, Bloodless is a very difficult boss, mainly because of the difficulty of hitting her. And she has some various attacks that can cause you pain and misery. And touching her is obviously not a good idea. She has two methods of trying to actually kill you, and this is the worst one right here. This is Bloody Rain. Ah, damn it, of course I get hit with the, the Crimson Drop. Bloody Rain it requires you to get underneath an umbrella, because if you do not, you are taking some really seriously unnecessary damage. Oh wow, that actually dodged that pretty damn good. Yeah, she is not an easy boss by any means, just because it's really hard to hit her. Ow, and dead. Not good. We kind of need as many people alive as possible. At least we can maybe get a better weapon for this fight. Ow. You know what? Old man time. Old man is what I should have been using all this fucking time, and should have definitely grabbed that Wisdom Getsu. Yeah, definitely do not forget about what you're dealing with, because having that that Frost Caliber just does wonders. Absolute wonders. 
So, hello again, Bloodless. I see that you just got right back into that bathtub. So, it seems that this boss just has a lovely personality of, I really don't give a crap about you. You can do whatever the hell you want to me, but I'm just too good for you. Very threatening in that sense that she could just be much worse than this, but she just decides to just take it easy on you. Dang. Now, I think the ice, the frost caliber, it does work on her, and as you can see, it does freezes her, but not for long. Wow, you actually were laughing about that? Was it that, was it that funny? Ah, uh, damn it, you shouldn't have been moving around like that, lady. And dead. But the fight's not totally over yet, because as you imagine, there's uh, this wonderful attack, desperation. We call this Bloody Storm. Way to dodge it is hitting that face. Keep that in mind for later. It's not, it's not crucial right now, but for later. Damn, that boss is annoying. But we're now three-fourths away through the game right now. And it, this stage it looks like a pain in the ass. And we're going to try to get through it as best we can. So next time, we're going to be going to the library and be taking books out and getting, using them to hopefully get through this level. So thanks for watching. Have a great day and adios.